Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Hello, Slink. Are you interested in coming out? Well, I don't need this. I probably would need this. Would you like to come out? Huh? You haven't been out slinking in quite some time. Huh? Can you move the uh, paper towels? Here he comes on his highway. Oh, lots of interesting things to taste and smell. Absolutely. Slinky like hasn't been out this slink uh, for quite some time because he developed a sort of a bad attitude. Um, I, I had a girl in with him and the girl was doing fine for the longest time and then suddenly sort of went down the tube, stopped eating uh, and, and died. Uh, she died in the hide box. I took the hide box and her out. And, you know, these animals, uh, you know, do sort of hold grudges for a while, you know. I've had to treat him a couple times. The wound, if you look through the older videos, got this big, and it's sort of a lipoma on his side, and uh, one, you know, grew to huge sizes, so I decided to lance it and uh, uh, squeeze the goop out and uh, uh, didn't suture it close, but sort of attempted to sort of glue it closed with uh, triple antibiotic ointment and then of course since it was a wound he started uh, uh, you know multiple uh, rapid shedding processes to heal the wound and it's it's quite quite well healed and you can hardly see it anymore um, when you have to treat these animals, what you know, you're you're doing the best thing for the animal's well-being. The animal doesn't necessarily see it that way, and uh, um, so you lose sort of ground with them because they get really upset and uh, and try to kill you for some length of time afterwards. Hi, how are you doing, bud? However, throughout all that uh, time, you want to go to someplace else, um, I can double hook you up there. Huh? Is that where you'd like to go? Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I would really like to change the substrate in this cage. Um, so we'll see uh, where he wants to go and how he wants to behave. Um, looks like he's heading home right now. He says, all right, I've seen what's out there. I'm just going to go back where I feel comfortable. Or he's going to try to climb elsewhere. Um, but I would, for him to, to sort of go out and come back this way, and I'll move him up there where he's not as quite as immobile as, as Kermit is. However, um, I can't clean his cage with him in the vicinity because I really need to keep my eye on him at all times uh, because he has a tendency to become twitchy and we see the little bit of head twitches now that I offer the hook. Um, we'll see if he'll come up the hook on his own or I'll have to support him. Um, he is He's a very dangerous mamba. He's also quite heavy and quite long. Much heavier than Kermit. 
tail, snake tails always do things like that. Here, go over here. There you go. There you go. If he's over here, he, I can at least get into his cage and clean it as long as he stays up there. He's not on the floor being difficult. Um, Kermit, uh, Kermit very seldom becomes difficult to work with outside of the cage. I mean really rarely. He's a relatively good-natured beast. Uh, Slinky, not so much. Slinky can go from uh, mild manner to a holy terror in a very short time. So I will uh, stop babbling right now and tend to his cage while he's out uh, because I may have only a short window to do this. So Mrs. Viper Keeper can keep her eye on Kermit while I do a quick substrate change because uh, he hasn't had an exchange in a while and only because uh, A, the snakes feel much more comfortable in, you know, having some poop around for whatever reason. Uh, one of the, the curators at the, the Smithsonian, you know, did lots of studies on, on snakes in captivity and uh, the snakes uh, did much better in, when they weren't disturbed and their cages, you know, cleaned and the snakes removed from their environment. Um, so there was some real research behind uh, not cleaning your cages so often. Um, you can spot clean and get, you know, poop, the poop that's sitting on the surface uh, out of the enclosure. But, you know, sometimes with my travel schedule, I'm not here when they poop, so I can't immediately remove it. And it sort of sits here until like, I can. And then spot cleaning with the nervous mamba uh, becomes also somewhat plot problematic. So Mr. K is, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Slinky uh, is uh, up there relaxing while I quickly yeah, he's not relaxing so much. He looks over here and starts the slow tongue flick, so yes. let me close the door and just leave you doing what you're doing. Well, you know, um, he's okay as long as he's doing because, you know, I'll continue to incessantly babble here about things. Uh, people new to my channel, uh, Mambas will traditionally do a slow tongue flick like Mrs. Viper Keeper is describing, and that sort of, um, you know, I'm a little upset, uh, stay away, I'm unsure of what's going to happen, uh, um, I'm not sure if I should uh, flee or just sit there. Um, now, that's sort of like a warning signal, uh, well it's certainly a warning signal, uh, I certainly take notice of it like Mrs. Viper Keeper just took notice of it, uh, because if you press the situation and further upset them, the tongue flick will be followed by a head twitch. Um, which is mean I'm really, really getting upset. And when they get to the twitchy head, tongue flick, and uh, flaring their neck into a cobra-like posture, that means that you've really pissed them off and a, an attack strike uh, could be following in short order. So, these are the things we look for when we're working with mambas. Again, uh, 
those are the usual warning signs, but strikes can come with no warning. And uh, uh, I know this from, uh, from several incidences, uh, mostly with black mambas. Uh, one, one was uh, a near miss where I actually deflected the mamba, and we have that on video, and it's published on the channel somewhere. Um, I was feeding a black mamba, and it was at the back of the cage, and the door opened, Mrs. Viper Keeper popped her head in, I turned my head, and just at that moment, the black mamba chose to strike. It was more of a feeding strike rather than a defensive strike, which is actually somewhat more dangerous uh, because if they think you're food, uh, I think the title of the video is called um, something to that effect. Uh, uh, I, I really hate to be uh, food or thought of as food, uh, but it does happen. Um, Fortunately, I caught motion out of my peripheral vision, and I used the feeding tongs to deflect the strike successfully. On another occasion, uh, the black mamba actually connected, and it required uh, an overnight stay in intensive care and some three vials of South African polyvalent uh, to counteract the effects of the bike. And uh, this was a strike from, again, inside of a cage. Mamba was just sitting there placidly, not expecting it to do anything, and it let loose with a feeding strike and connected. Uh, my friend Victor, uh, recently had the same sort of occurrence. Uh, you really, really have to watch black mambas very closely and always expect the strike. I let my guard down and it got me. Hi, Mr. Slink. Would you like a drink, huh? Huh? There we go. Mr. Slink uh, commonly drinks from this squeeze bottle. This is a normal thing that we do. <clears throat> Hi, bud. Uh, okay, they're they're downstairs in the, uh, they're just downstairs, and I'll go get one. Uh, uh, you can keep your eye on the slink from the doorway. Now, one reason why I don't like changing cages very, uh, substrate very often is it's very expensive. You know, uh, one of a cage this size almost takes a full bag of the forest floor uh, cypress uh, mulch. Um, you know, I don't buy bulk cy cypress mulch because it's not sterilized, etc., uh, etc. Et Therefore, I buy the more expensive stuff, uh, which you know, retail a bag of this stuff is like 20 bucks. Um, it, uh, it gets expensive fairly rapidly, and with, I don't know how many cages I have, but I have a bunch. I'll probably get him a new cage, but first I'm going to put the I do. I I can't give you water back there. 
Yeah, he's freak that's freaking him out a bit. So, slow tongue flick again. And backing up. Boy, he is a really twitchy snake. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I haven't done this in a while, as I explained in the beginning. Uh, so... Yeah, Kermit, in comparison, is just so laid back, so easy going. Yes. Generally speaking, if there is such a thing, and I sort of hesitate in saying it, but Eastern Green Mambas uh, should sort of be your first Mamba if you get a Mamba. Uh, they have a different or additional warning signs that you need to watch out for. Uh, green Mambas seem to hiss and uh, puff and puff more frequently uh, when ticked off. You know, they'll also do the traditional tongue flick, uh, head twitch, but when I really tick, ticked one off, like for instance the girl in the other room, uh, when she gets ticked off, uh, she uh, hisses and lets you know that she's displeased with your... Why do I always get these glasses in the wrong... always have to do it a second time. Yeah, I sort of want to get the glass back in as quickly as I can in case we need to do a bailout maneuver and wrestle uh, uh, Slinky back into his enclosure. And it helps if you do that and you have the glass in there, because otherwise mm, it's rather dangerous getting the glass in when occupied by a mamba, as one can imagine. Um, rather hazardous, and I would prefer not to do it. Now, I don't necessarily think that I want to scoop Slinky uh, back to his cage because right now he's sort of in a defensive position. You know, sometimes you have to wait for a better situation, and as one of my snake keepers, mentors that I look up to, uh, Don, he's currently at the Richmond Zoo, uh, he says never press a bad position with a venomous snake, and he is very correct on that. You know, generally speaking, unless the critter is going to escape your room, uh, you can just let them sort of shoot around the room and tire out a little bit and then pick your uh, time and place of recapture. And it's absolutely uh, the best way to go. Oh, I'm not going to bother you, dude. I'm just going to let you sit there. I, I don't know if he'll use it, but I will offer a trap box, which would of course, well I don't even know if I can get it in the cage, that's one of the things about trap boxes is some of them are a bit large and difficult to get into the cage, etc, etc, so we'll try to get this into a nice place. He's trying to see what you're up to. Yeah, what are you doing to my house? Sort of a deal. I'm trying to get a lot of my difficult to work with animals 
into an environment where it's safer to work with them uh, because as Lori and I joke, uh, we're getting too old for this shit. <laughs> um, I will, uh, it's much nicer and you can clean your cage much more often uh, if you can get them to use a trap box. Uh, as well as if you need to transport them and they go into their trap box, you can easily lock the trap box closed and put it in another transport container and have a very safe way of transporting. I think we would need a very large trap box for Elvis. Although, I've considered that, but how do you get 12 feet plus of this mega sausage uh, into such an enclosure. So, all right. We're going to stop here for now. I don't know if you'll see me move Slinky back into his cage or not. Uh, it's entirely up to him whether he decides to go on the move and then I can easily wrangle him. Because if I go in there and I try to get him now, uh, it'll be a battle. I would prefer to wait. He's not going to get out of the room. Um, I doubt he will go visit Elvis. Okay, so I'll take the camera and I can work in here safely with him and we'll just uh, escort uh, Mrs. Viper Keeper out of the room. Hi. No, I'm not coming after you. Just uh, chill out. I made provisions for you to go back to your cage if you so desire. So with that said, there's poop and water bowls and things that I can do safely. Uh, would keep my eye on the slink. Hey, slink, how was that? Huh? How was that, dude? Easy, easy. Come on, it's time to go back. It's time to go back. Come on. Come on, don't be difficult. Don't be difficult. Oh, why do you have to be difficult? Slinky seldom comes out anymore. He's just a really difficult dude to get back into his cage. 